An alpha particle is a type of radiation consisting of two protons and two neutrons. Here's a simple diagram representing the alpha particle. It has two neutrons, represented by the green circles, and two protons, represented by the blue circles with a plus. You might notice that this particle is the same as a helium nucleus. It's an atom with an atomic number of 2 and a mass number of 4, just without any electrons. But where do these particles come from? Well, large nuclei will release alpha particles to decrease their size and become more stable. So these nuclei would be unstable because of how many protons and neutrons they're trying to hold together. You can think of it like trying to hold together a bunch of ping pong balls in your hands. The more there are, the harder it will be. So in the large nucleus, the alpha particle forms when some of the protons and neutrons break off, because they can't be held by the nucleus anymore. Since there are now fewer protons and neutrons in this nucleus, it will be more stable. Though there may need to be more decays, before it becomes completely stable. For your exams, you won't need to be able to recall which nuclei will or won't decay by releasing alpha particles. This information will always be given to you. So what effect will alpha particles have on other atoms? Alpha particles are highly ionising due to their strong positive charge. Remember that by ionisation, we mean when atoms become ions by gaining or losing electrons. So here, the alpha particle has a charge of 2 plus, since it contains two positive protons and no negative electrons. Then, in an atom, we have a positive nucleus surrounded by negative electrons. Normally, the electrons are kept in the atom because they're attracted to the nucleus. But when the positive alpha particle gets close to the atom, one of the outer shell electrons will be pulled towards it. This is because of the strong electrostatic attraction from their opposing charges. But does this mean that alpha particles will cause lots of ionisation in their lifetime? Well, no, because alpha particles can only travel around 5 centimetres in air so they have very short ranges compared to other types of radiation. Let's imagine our alpha particle passing through some air molecules, which will be molecules like oxygen and nitrogen, for example. Since the alpha particle is large, it would only travel about 5 centimetres before it loses all its energy due to collisions with these molecules. It will also lose energy quickly because of how much ionisation it causes. Even if air molecules don't come into contact with the alpha particle, its strong electromagnetic forces are still enough to make them lose electrons. So around the point that the alpha particle managed to reach, most of the air molecules will be ionised. Now for your exams, you won't need to explain the effects of alpha particles on air in this much detail, or remember this specific range, but you should be able to recall that the particle doesn't travel far in air but still causes a lot of ionisation. But is there a way of reducing the range of the particle even further? Well, alpha particles will also be stopped by a thin sheet of paper, though most solids will also stop them. We just need enough molecules for the alpha particle to collide with. So even if we just have a sheet of paper less than one millimetre thick, this will be enough atoms for the alpha particle to be stopped by. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy-to-follow videos and more. 
you'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE Physics course. See you there!